Creating and Managing Users To have a person join the service, you must create a user account for them. After the user account has been created, you can assign cases to this user. To add a new user, go to the Configuration section, which will also select the User subsection since it is the first on the list. Then click on the Create User button above the list of existing users. You'll have to give them a username first, which is their email address. This is a mandatory field. Enter the first and last name of the user next. This is the information that will be used when searching the user section, so make sure the information is accurate and is the person's actual name. Nicknames are not recommended. To add a user to any of the existing user groups on the system, click on the plus icon above the groups list and put a check mark next to any groups you wish the user to be a member of. A user can be a member of multiple groups, and they do not have to relate to the department the user belongs to. If you have added the user to a group they should not belong to, hover over the group and click on the X on the right side of the group to delete it. For information purposes, you can enter the user's identification number in the Officer ID field. Each user can have a maximum of two phone numbers assigned to them, which can be entered in the mobile phone fields. These fields are also not searchable. The status of a user can be set to active or inactive. Users who are inactive are still searchable. A user's type can either be a regular user or a guest. Guest users are unable to perform searches in the system and can only view the cases assigned to them. Regular users have full access to the service, but the configuration section is only available to users who are members of the tenant administrator group. You can add a picture of the user to help in identification. Click on the picture icon to choose a file on your local machine. If this user has been assigned a device, such as a body-worn camera, you can associate the device with the user in the Devices section. The device must be activated before you can assign it to a user. Click on Save and the user account will be created, and an email will be sent to notify the user that they now have access to the service. Once you have saved the user, you can now make any changes to the user's privileges. Some of the privileges cannot be activated for guest users. If you have added this user to any user groups, you may see some of the privileges are checked already and grayed out, with an indicator that this privilege was inherited from a user group. To edit a user, go to the User subsection of the Configuration section and click on a name in the list below. You can also use the search field on top to find a user. Enter the first few characters of the name, email address or officer ID in the search field and press enter or click on the magnifying glass. The list can also be filtered by the status. Next to the search field you can choose to view active users, inactive users or both. From the search results click on a user to edit the user's information. All the fields that were present when creating the user can be modified including the user's privileges. Don't forget to click on the Save button on the bottom to keep the changes, or click Cancel to discard anything that was modified since the last save. If a user has forgotten their password, you may be able to reset it for them. This is only applicable if the user is not managed by Active Directory. For Active Directory user accounts, they will need to contact their system administrator for assistance. To reset a password, browse to a user as we saw in the previous steps, and from the user's information page, click on the Reset Password button on the top right corner of the screen. The user will receive an email with instructions for resetting their password.